Hi, this is Mrs. Downey, and I'm going to talk about Chapter 9. So in Chapter 9, it's all about sequences and series. So let's start by talking about what is a sequence. Well, sequence, in our first lesson called Mathematical Patterns 9-1, it talks about a sequence. A sequence is an ordered list of numbers that follow a certain pattern or rule. So, for example, this 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, this is a sequence because you must add 5 to get to the next term. And each one of these elements is a term of the sequence. So this is the first term of the sequence, the second term of the sequence, the third term of the sequence, the fourth term of the sequence, the fifth term of the sequence, and the sixth term of the sequence. We can also refer to these generally as, um, let me delete this if I can. No, that's not gonna work. Okay, so this is, let me get a different color. A sub 1, there's the first term, and we call it A like all. So whatever it took to get that term, we just call that whatever it took. So if it was a math rule, in the end, you're going to have 5. So we call that A sub 1. This is A sub 2. Whoops. <laughs> My TV went off pause. So welcome to Roadhouse. Okay, so A sub 2 is my second term. A sub 3 is the third. A sub 4 is the fourth term. A sub 5 and A sub 6. So these are how we refer to each term in the series. So if I ask you in the series above, what is the sixth element? You're going to say, oh, well, the sixth element is 30. Okay, that simple. Sometimes, or most of the time, we use a formula to generate a sequence. So let's look at that. So for example, um, if I have something like whatever element we're on, say whatever, we're going to use a variable for that element. It could be one through however big our, our series is, or excuse me, our sequence is. So whatever we're going to use, we're going to say to get to that element, it's going to be equal to 12n plus 3. So this is called an explicit formula because it describes the nth term in the sequence. So whatever term we're on, we're calling that the nth term. So if they ask us to develop uh, the first five element, or excuse me, the first five terms of the sequence, we're going to say, okay, let me move this up. So the first element, a sub 1, is equal to, and now all we're doing is replacing the ends with 1. So the first element is equal to 12 times 1 plus 3. And the second element, a sub 2, is equal to 12 times 2 plus 3. Just replacing the n with our term. The third term is equal to 12 times 3 plus 3. Our fourth term is equal to 12 times 4 plus 3. And our fifth term is equal to 12 times 5 plus 3. Okay, so let's solve these. Well, we know 12 times 1 is 12 plus 3, which is equal to 15. Okay, so our first element is equal to 15. For the second element, we've got 12 times 2, which is, let me use a different color, 24 plus 3. 24 plus 3 is equal to 20. 7. 12 times 3 is 36. 36 times 3 is going to be, let me pause and finish this table and I'll come back. Okay, so here it is completed. So our sequence ends up, let's get all of these. Our first sequence, a sub 1 is 15. So, um, how can I do this? Let's just 
shrink it a little bit. Okay, so we could say our list for a sub n, our sequence of 12n plus 3, our first five elements are 15, 27, 39, 51, and 63. So there's our list. Or actually, it's probably a curly brace, right? So those are our first five elements. A sub 1, A sub 2, A sub 3, A sub 4, and A sub 5. Now the great thing about an explicit formula, and it's explicit because we're using in to describe our term that we're on, so let me move this up. Okay, so the great thing about this is if they ask us for like the 15th element, all I have to do is plug in 15 for n. Okay, so that's going to be equal to, Alexa, what's 12 times 15? 12 times 15 is 180. So it's going to be 180 plus 3, which is equal to 183. Okay, so we could say the 15th element of the sequence is equal to 183. So that's the great thing about a sequence and an explicit formula. All right, so that basically gets us through our first lesson. <clears throat> We've got one other thing to cover, which is the uh, recursive formula. So when we talk about a recursive definition, uh, the definition for this is it is a sequence. Recursive definition for a sequence contains two parts. <clears throat> so it has an initial condition. Sorry about my writing. Okay, which is the value of the very first term. And then the second part of this, let me change colors here, is a recursive formula. Okay, so I should mark that out and say recursive definition. Okay, so recursive definition has an initial condition and it has a recursive formula. So what does recursive mean? It means you're going to take the previous element, or excuse me, previous term in a sequence and you're going to use that to get to your next number. So for example, in my formula over here, Whoops, it's rolling on me. I need to turn that sound click off. Okay, so for example, to get to this term, the third term in this sequence for a sub 3, we had to take a sub 2 and add 5. Okay, and let me point out while we're here, use a different color. So, there were, we had to add 5 to get here. Between these two, we had to add 5. We had to add 5. And we had to add 5. And it continued. So on all of these, they we all had to add 5 to get from one term to the next. This 5 is the common difference. Okay? So when we're working with these, we usually subtract them. So 30 minus 25 is 5. 25 minus 20 is 5. 20 minus 15 is 5. 15 minus 10 is 5. And 10 minus 5 is 5. So all the way through the sequence, we have a common difference of 5. And that is a true mathematical term, common difference. And here, 
we're going to show, we always show our common difference with the D. And in this sequence, my common difference was equal to 5. Okay, so that's one of the things we're going to use in recursion is we have to look for this common difference. All right, so um, in this formula over here, if we were defining it, we would say our initial condition is 5. So that's your first term. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. So my initial condition was 5. Or actually, let's show it like this. That's our a sub 1, right? Our initial condition, a sub 1 equals 5. And then we have to write this formula. Well, we know we have a common difference, but what do we do? We say whatever term we're on, look at the previous term. So if I am on the third term of the sequence, I'm going to go to the second term, which would be the current term minus 1 and we're going to take that previous element and we're going to add 5 to it. So there is my recursive definition. Okay, Both of these things must be present to write the definition, the recursive definition. So the initial condition, the first element, a sub 1 equal 5, and our formula is the current element is equal to the previous element plus 5. Okay, and we know that 5 is our D, right? That's our common difference. So we could rewrite this in a very general term. So this is getting a little clogged up. Okay, so we could write it like this. Our first element is 5, that's our initial condition, and then our recursive definition is a sub n equals a, the previous element, plus our common difference. Okay. So here I've rewritten this, so here's our recursive formula. And um, we've got our first term is equal to 5, a sub 1 equal 5. And we created our definition, which now we know our common difference here is to add 5. Take the previous term and add 5. So if they ask us for the next term in our sequence, we know that we're looking for this one. <clears throat> so if the previous is a sub 6, that means we're going to say the next term, which is a sub 7, so the current term is equal to the previous term, a sub 7 minus 1, plus our common difference of 5. So a sub 7 minus 1, that's a sub 6. And the sixth element in our series was 30. So it's 30 plus 5, which would be equal to 35. So our seventh element is 35. OK? So it's a recursive definition because you have to have the previous term to get to the next. Okay, to get to the current. All right, so that gets us through our first lesson. And on the study guide, which is what we're going to be working while we're out on uh, working from home doing distance learning, this would get you through the study guide of Chapter 9, Problems 1, 2, and 3. In the second section of Chapter 9, we discuss arithmetic sequences. So there are two types of arithmetic sequences. Or excuse me, there are two types of sequences. One of them is arithmetic, which we're going to talk about today, and then geometric, which is coming. So for today, we're going to focus on arithmetic. So what is an arithmetic sequence? It means when I have uh, a sequence, and let's use this one, 2, 4, 8, 16. 
Okay, so we know that's our first term, second term, third term, fourth term. So if we're adding to get to the next term, so let's see. So 4 minus 2 is 2. 8 minus 4 is 4. And 16 minus 8 is 8. Well, we don't have a common difference here. Because of that, this is not an arithmetic sequence. Okay. But if I do, let's do this one more time. Okay, so if I take three, six, nine, 12, 15, if I take the difference in these terms, 6 minus 3 is 3, 9 minus 6 is 3, 12 minus 9 is 3, 15 minus 12 is 3, we have a common difference. So our common difference, which we denote with D, is equal to 3. So if they ask us to, if is this an arithmetic sequence? For this sequence, we say yes, it is arithmetic. And what is our common difference? Our common difference is equal to 3. So there's ways also of finding out what is like the 20th term, or what's the 100th term, or 200th term. So in the series here, it starts with our first term being 2 to 5 to 8 and 11 and so on, all the way to the nth element. So they're going to ask us, what is the 20th term? Well, there's a way to figure that without calculating all 20 numbers. So what we can do is we can say, well, I know my first element, which we can just define as a or a sub 1, and we know that that is 2. So if we know this is a sequence, and they tell us it's a sequence, all we have to know is the beginning term and the difference. And then we can use that to calculate whatever term they need. So what is our difference for this sequence? Well, 5 minus 2 is 3. And I really don't have to calculate any more because if they tell us it's a, se tell us it's a sequence, then we know they're all going to be the same. If they're asking you, is this a sequence, then you'll have to calculate all and make sure there's a common difference. But for here, they tell us this is a sequence, so we know this is going to be the same for all, the same difference. That's the difference of 3, that's the difference of 3, and that will continue all the way to the end. So if we wanted to know what is the difference we just have to calculate 1, and we know that right now that's 3. So we have our first term and our difference. So we can take that and plug it into a general formula for a sequence. So what do we need? The first term and the number of differences. Well, we know our difference, and we know uh, it's always going to be, for example, this is four terms here. How many differences do we have in four terms? We have one difference, two difference, three difference. So it looks like it's going to be the term you're on minus one. That's how many differences you'll have. So it would be four minus one, or generally speaking, n minus one. So the number of difference times n minus one. So now we can calculate whatever term we need. So a sub 20 here is going to be the first term, which is 2, plus the common difference, which is 3, times the number of those differences. So it's going to be the n minus 1, or 20 minus 1, which is 19. So we're going to start with 2, and then you take 3 times 19. Alexa, what's 3 times 19? 
Two times 19 is 57. So we have 57 here. So it's going to be 2 plus 57 or 59. So my 20th element in this sequence is equal to 59. And that's how you calculate the nth term for any sequence. Okay, so here's another type of problem we get with sequences. And this is when they just give us one missing term in an arithmetic sequence. So this one's probably the easiest of all. And they want to know what is the missing term. So find the missing term of this arithmetic sequence. So all you have to do is take the arithmetic mean. So what does it mean? It means we're going to take 22 plus 30 and divide it by 2. So whatever's in our first and uh, two numbers down the road here are two numbers on the outside. You're going to add those together and divide it by 2. So 22 plus 30 is equal to 52 and divide that by 2. And then that's going to be our That's going to be 26. Okay, so that's going to be our answer. So 52 divided by 2 is 26, so that becomes our missing answer. Now let's check and see if that's correct. So if I start subtracting to find my common difference, 30 minus 26 is 4, 26 minus 22 is 4, that is correct. So we've got a common difference. So it's adding 4 each time. 22 plus 4 is 26. 26 plus 4 is 30. So again, you just take the beginning and the last number to get the skipped number. Okay? So 22 plus 30 was 52. 52 divided by 2 is 26. Okay? So that is how you work those. So now we're going to talk about what is a geometric sequence, okay? And now we're in 9-3, geometric sequence. So on a geometric sequence, instead of adding to get to the next term, you're multiplying. So let's see. How do you determine? Well, you're going to now take a ratio. Instead of subtracting, we're going to take a ratio, which means we're dividing. So take this, the term. 4 and divide it by the previous. 4 divided by 2, which is 2. And now let's look at the next one. 8 divided by 4 is also 2. And then 16 divided by 8 is also 2. So these all come out to the same ratio. So we call this a common ratio. And we denote that in our formulas with a small lowercase r. Okay, so um, oh, I can't get that to come up. Okay, so if they ask you, is this a geometric sequence, you're going to take the ratio, look for a common ratio. If you have a common ratio, you say yes, this is a geometric sequence. So if you multiply to get from one number to the next, it's a geometric sequence. If you're adding to get from one number to the next, it's arithmetic, okay? So now let's look at the formula for a geometric sequence. And I'm just gonna go through the formula with you real quick, and that's all you need to know to determine a specific element in a sequence. So the formula looks like this. Get into it. I'm going to pause and come back. With... Okay, so here's the formula for a geometric sequence. This is the explicit definition. So it means the current term is the first term times 
the common ratio to the n minus 1 power. Okay, so what does that look like in a problem? So if they give us two terms and they say, uh, what is the eighth term of a geometric sequence that begins with 2, 10, and so on? And they want to know what is the eighth term. Okay, so we look at this and they're already telling it's a geometric sequence, so we know the ratio is going to be the same for all numbers, so all we need are two. So 10 divided by 2 is equal to 5. So we have a common ratio of 5. Okay, and that's denoted with the R. Okay, so now I'm going to erase this so we can make some room here. So we're going to use our formula now and plug this in. So we know a sub n, so we want to know what is the eighth term equals the first term, which we know is 2, times the common ratio, which is 5, to the n minus 1. Well, n, the one we're trying to find is 8. So 8 minus 1 is 7. Okay, so 5 to the 7th power. Alexa, what is 5 to the 7th power? 5 to the power of 7 is 78,125. Okay, so we have 2 times 78,125. Alexa, what is 2 times 78,125? 2 times 78,125 is 156,250. There it is, 156,250. So that is our answer. So you use this formula, the explicit formula, for a geometric sequence. We're almost done. Okay, so the last type of problem we're going to work with today is how to find that missing term in a geometric sequence. This is a little different from the arithmetic, but still just as easy. So we've got this geometric series going, and they say, okay, there's something that happens before, and we get to 45, we're missing an element, and then it's 80, and then it goes on forever and ever. Well, what is this missing element? So for a geometric se sequence, you're going to do this a little differently. So we're going to say this is equal to the missing term. So if we'll, we'll just call that maybe the ninth. We'll say that's the ninth, and this is the 11th. Okay, so we want to know what is this 10th term. So it's equal to, now we're going to take, this is how you work all of these in a geometric. So you take the square root of these two multiplied together. So 45 times 80. Alexa, what is 45 times 80? 45 times 80 is 3,600. So, 3,600. Alexa, what's the square, square root of 3,600? The square root of 3,600 is 60. So, I should have known that, right? So, there is our missing term. Let's check it out. Oops, it bounced back on me. Oh. It's very mobile, isn't it? Okay, so we know we have to multiply to get to the next term. So what are we multiplying by? Okay, so actually this one's a little harder, but you don't really need to know this. What we're multiplying by is a fraction. We're multiplying this each time by 1 and 1 third, or 1.33333. So Alexa, what is 45 times 1 and 1 third? 45 times 1.3333 is 60. There you go. Did that answer your question? Yes. Alexa. Thanks for your feedback. <laughs> Alexa, what is 60 times 1 and 1 third? 60 times 1.3333 is 80. So there you go. 
So we're multiplying by one and one third each time, or four thirds. So uh, we don't need to know what that common ratio is right now. All we need to know is how to find that middle term. And that concludes this lesson. So you should be able to work your study guide all the way through number nine. So if you will do that, and uh, you'll get another lesson soon. Thank you for watching. This concludes the video. Okay, so I decided to add the study guide to this. With this lesson today, you were able to work 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Okay, that takes us through in order everything that I went through on the lesson. Okay, good luck and happy mathing. <laughs> Stay inside and be kind to each other. And this definitely concludes the video now.